Hi guys, welcome back to our devotion time. Today is July 9th and our devotion is titled, Not Shaken. It's out of Psalm 55, 22. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. We all have different ways of dealing with worry. Some internalize, others call a friend, and still others find a way to take their minds off it. When you bring our worry to God and lay our anxious hearts bare before Him, He will encourage us, lift us up, and sustain us. He will not allow us to be shaken or weakened by worry because He holds us through every situation. The God who knows beginning from end is not flustered by our anxiety and He does not allow us to be overcome by uncertainty. You know, I want you guys to get out your Bibles today because we are going to do some scripture. We're going to read some scripture today because, you know, I looked up the meaning of the word shaken there, and it's also in other versions, it's moved. Um, and it means to totter, shake, or slip. Okay? So when God says in Psalm 55, 22, that we, he will not allow us to be shaken or moved, he's saying, I will not allow you to totter, to shake, or to slip. I'm not going to allow you to fall. Okay? So I want us to first go over. I'm looking at my little list of scriptures here because we've got a few of them that are just talking about finding peace with God and understanding that He is the one who can help us. You know, so many things in this world are out there to distract us and take our minds off of our troubles. I mean, there's television. We've talked about this. And it goes all the way down to our crafting, okay? I say that to us because this is a crafting channel. A majority of it is a crafting channel, and so we're all crafters here, um, or artists, or creatives. And, you know, we use our art and our creativity and stuff to sometimes distract ourselves away from, you know, and I believe in art and healing. I do. I think it's very cathartic, and it's very important. However... I don't think that art or crafting or shopping or eating or drinking or drugs or <laughs> anything, television or social media or scrolling ourselves to death on our phones is ever going to give us the peace that passes understanding, okay? We, the problem isn't that we find something to distract ourselves. Um, and this also comments on internalizing. That's not healthy either, of course. And calling a friend, you know, going to the phone before you go to God's throne or going to a distraction before you go to God or using the distraction to make you feel better and not really bothering to go to the Lord is what we're talking about today. And I want to go over here to, let's see, let's start ourselves out in Isaiah 41. Now, let's start in the best scripture of all, Philippians. We're going to go to Philippians 4, okay? I think you guys already know where I'm headed with this. Because I talk about this passage quite a bit, actually. I love this passage. And I'm going to start in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Now, We'll stop there for a second, and we're going to read on in a moment. Because it literally is telling us here, Paul is saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. What does that word always mean in the Greek? It means always, all the time, whether you're in good or you're in bad. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, he says, I'm going to repeat it. Rejoice. <laughs> Give God glory. Sing praises unto him. Be thankful and have gra a grateful heart. Rejoice in your God. Rejoice in your Savior. And be anxious for nothing. So if Paul's telling us this, and we just talked yesterday about Paul and all the things that he went through, and he counted it as 
light affliction. Remember? Yesterday we talked about that. Paul counted his afflictions, and we're talking shipwrecks and imprisonment, unlawful imprisonment. I mean, the man went through some stuff. He was bit by a snake. He was, I mean, he even was killed at one point and was rose from the dead, okay? Paul was, was one of those apostles who he went through so much. And Jesus even told, uh, told um, is it Artemis, the one who went to pray for him, Artemis, I believe, told him he needs to understand Saul Paul needs to understand what he's going to go through for me so Paul went through some major things and he's the one here telling us be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication we've talked about that word supplication before it means an offering or a gift okay so God considers our prayers our needs to be a gift when we supplicate to him when we give him something in faith he counts that as a gift to him. It's our faith that pleases him. So with a, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, thanking God for what he's going to do, let your requests be made known to God. And what's God going to do? Our Father, he's going to pour out peace that surpasses all our understanding to guard our heart and our mind through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, if you today don't know Jesus as your Savior, then this may not mean as much to you. But I want to stop here for a moment and just pray a prayer. And if there's anyone out there who's listening within the sound of my voice who would like to accept Christ as their Savior today, I'm going to pray with you. And all you need to do is believe in your heart that Jesus was crucified for your sins that he was buried and that he rose from the dead, that he is the son of God and that he is God. And you accept him into your heart by confessing with your mouth, you will be saved. And when you pray these prayers to God, you will have that peace that passes understanding to guard your heart and your mind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. I thank you that he died for my sins. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you rose from the dead and that you are at the right hand of God making propitiation for me. I invite you into my life now to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I remove myself from the throne of my heart and I ask that you would be seated on that throne, that you would be my Lord. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sins. I believe that you are God. And I promise to serve you and you only from this day forward. In your name I pray. Amen. If you just said that prayer, congratulations, because you just made the biggest decision and the best decision of all of your life. And the angels right now, the Bible tells us the angels are rejoicing in heaven that you are saved. Now we're going to go on with our lesson. Finally, brethren, now he gives us instruction. He doesn't just tell us how to pray. He doesn't just tell us what to do with down here. He says, finally, brethren, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Okay? He wants us to meditate upon things that are good, not to sit around meditating upon that which is worrying us. Okay? Now let's go over here to, let's see, let's go to 1 Peter 5, 7. Praise God. <clears throat> chapter 5 verse 7 tells us casting all your care upon him for he cares for you okay we need to humble ourselves above here it says therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Now let's go over here. 
to, I'm looking at my little list. Let's go to Luke. Okay. Luke 12, <clears throat> verse 25. And which of you, and this is Jesus asking, and which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your statue, to your own stature? It says here, let's just read this. Do not worry. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. How much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have, and give alms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We saw that yesterday. My goodness, read this passage when you're to yourself. Just read chapter 12 of Luke between 22 and 34 and just be encouraged. Be encouraged, my sister, my brother, because the Lord is with you and he sees your needs. He sees what's going on in your life. He sees what's going on in my life. Are things perfect in my life? No. <laughs> my goodness, things are not perfect in my life. Oh, but the joy that I find in knowing that God is in control and that I don't have to worry. That I just need to enter into my God's rest and be encouraged. That he's not going to allow me to shake. That he's not going to allow me to fall to slip. Remember to turn yourselves to him first. Then when you enter into things of your daily activity and your pursuits, whatever they may be, you'll have that peace that passes understanding that guards your heart and your mind through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That you won't have to worry. That you won't have to feel fear and anxiety and stress trying to figure out how to fix everything. The Lord tells us we can't change anything. The one thing we can do is trust Him and, and spend time letting God know, I'm here, Lord. Here's what's going on, and I know you see it. But you've told me to talk to you about it in your word. You've told me to make supplication. You've told me to lift it up to you, so I am. Now I ask for your peace. And I promise you, family, the Lord is not a man that he should lie. He wants to give you that peace. But you have to surrender what it is you're holding on to. The control that we sometimes feel like we have to have. Otherwise, I mean, how can I just exist in the midst of this problem hasn't gone away yet? How can I exist in the middle of it without trying to figure out how to fix it? If there's a step to take, to fix a given situation, the Lord's going to show it to you if you're relying on Him. Let's go over here to Proverbs. Chapter 3. We've read this recently, but I, I love this passage, and it really needs, it needs mentioning again. Trust in the Lord. Chapter 3, verse 5. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil for it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Again, we see, put the Lord first, trust in him first. Stop trying to walk in your own understanding of a situation. I know it's difficult sometimes to release things to God. I'm gonna tell you guys, I've always been very transparent with you guys and I have to admit, I continually, release my family to him. He is in control of what happens with Joey, Maria, Enoch, and Courtney. I am not. I'm their mother. I'm his wife. I'm his grandmother. But ultimately, there are things in their lives going on that I would change if I could. And I can't because I'm not God. And all I can do to not lose my mind is, is what I'm telling you here in this precious word is life, okay? This, this right here is peace. You have to put this word into your heart so that then the Holy Spirit can draw it out when you need it. You have to go to God's word. You have to pray and give these things to the Lord. You have to use that muscle of faith and hope for things that are not yet as they will be because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We have to turn to the Lord to find true peace. Yes, you can take your mind off of it with shopping or spending money or crafting or fill in the blank, even working, even working at the church. I used to do that. I used ministry as a way to escape my problems instead of trusting the Lord that he was going to deal with them and facing them day to day with him by my side. I ran away. I went to work. I went to church. I went to work. I went to church. I did it for years. It didn't help me. It didn't make the problems go away. It didn't make me feel better, not ultimately. Not in those times when I was alone and I had to face God and face myself, okay? So I understand running away. I confess that with you, I I understand. I'm just saying, do yourself a favor. Trust God first, okay? Let's pray. We thank you, God, that, you're, that you welcome us to come to you when we're burdened. We thank you that you don't want us to carry any anxiety on our own. Lord, our future is secure in your hands, and all we have, all we have to do is rest in you. Lord, help us to do that. Help us to learn how to do that. Help us to realize that it's just as simple as releasing the problem to you and allowing your peace to flow into our heart, to cover our mind. I lift up my sisters and my brothers in Christ and I pray right now in Jesus' name that each one of them, whatever whatever their given situation is, that Lord, they would sincerely turn it over to you realizing that you're trustworthy and that you love them and that you want what's best for them, for their loved ones, for their situation. That even if your your purpose and your way doesn't always look like our purpose and our way, that ultimately it's for our good because you love us. And that even when things don't look like they're for our good, even when we don't understand, the Father will trust you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Sorry about that loud noise. It was my glue stick. It fell over. <laughs> I love you guys. I know the last couple days has been kind of um, deeper messages. <laughs> I hope that they've been helpful. I love you very much, and thank you so much for being with me again. I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.